So we're going to talk about octopus today. Um, for those of you that this is your first time here, um, my name is Madeline. I go by Mo. Um, and I am one of the scuba instructors at Konohonu Divers. Um, I also just graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Marine Science from the University of Hawaii at Hilo. Um, and I just love talking about the ocean and um, mostly its critters and how it works and all that kind of stuff. Um, so my hope is to share all of this information um, that I find really interesting and that you guys are going to find interesting. Um, and I just want to foster awareness and on wonder about the ocean. They belong to the phylum mollusca, along with all of the clams, the um, nudibranch, different, different critters, things like that. Um, so the sea slugs, snails, clams, like all of the shelled critters uh, with soft bodies. Um, specifically, they belong in class cephalopoda. Um, cephalo meaning head. Um, so they all have, um, all the cephalopods along with the octopus have an obvious head looking um, part of their body. Um, so um, yeah, so they all have obvious head looking part of their body so this octopus and that's where all of the organs are centered in this animal um class cephalopoda also includes your squids um so you can also see the clear head definition up here of the squid um the chambered nautilus which is another really interesting critter in this class um and then the cuttlefish as well so again you can see the clear head definition um which is what you get um which is why they were named cephalopods but we're going to be focusing on the octopus today um so octopus meaning eight legged so it's greek for eight legged um and they are predominantly are only marine animals. Um, so you will not find like freshwater octopus or freshwater nautilus um, in a lake or a river. Now there's two schools of thought, um, not necessarily schools of thought, but two different um, types of cephalopod or octopus specifically um, within the octopus branch of the cephalopods. Um, you have your Serena octopus, which is this cute little Dumbo octopus over here. Um, so these guys have two fins on their head that look like little floppy ears, hence the name Dumbo octopus. Um, they do have an internal shell and their tentacles or their arms right next to their suction cups have little cilia on them, which are these little wispy um, appendages on the arms of this Dumbo octopus. Um, so those are the three big main things that classify a serene octopus. But then there's also the inserina, which is the one that we think of most often, right? So here on the left, we have our giant Pacific octopus, um, which can get really huge. Um, we have our Hawaiian day octopus over here on our right. And then we also have our blue ringed octopus. Okay. Um, so they are in Serena octopus. Now I mentioned before that octopus are in the same phylum as things like clams and stuff like that. Um, so that means that they're going to have a lot of the same anatomy. Um, so here, we have a diagram of a clam, right? Um, so we have, we have our foot right here of the, on our clam. Um, that's the muscle part. That's how the clam um, digs down into the sand and buries down. Um, then you have your reproductive organs. You have your two, main muscles. So this one here on the right is going to be your posterior shell muscle. 
And then the one on the left is gonna be your anterior shell muscle. You have your digestive gland, the shell, heart, kidney. Um, you have gills in this animal. There's, there's the butt, the anus. And then you have your siphon or your excrement where um, the water goes out of that has been passed through the gills. Now we're also gonna look at an octopus. And it's quite similar, except for it's in a little bit of a different location and they're adapted a little bit differently. Um, so this siphon right here, um, it's this guy. This, it's much larger in an octopus. Um, and that's partly because they use that as, um, as locomotion. Um, Chris is asking if we have all three of these octopus in Hawaii. No, we do not have these three octopus in Hawaii. Um, the giant Pacific octopus is mostly centered in like the Pacific Northwest. So like Alaska, Oregon, Washington um, in cold water environments. And the blue octopus is more in like the Indo-Pacific. Good question though. Um, so yeah, so back to the siphon. So it's a lot larger in your octopus, mainly because it's a larger animal than a clam, um, but also because it functions, it does a little bit more than just the siphon in, um, than in the clam. You also have your gills right over here. Um, you know, same kind of thing. Um, the muscles in the octopus, why is this? <laughs> Um, the muscles in the octopus are a little bit different. So because the octopus does not have a shell, um, these shell muscles have been adapted into one big main muscle or one big main muscle group, which is the mantle muscles. So the mantle is the flesh around the head of the octopus. So that's called the mantle. Um, so instead of having shell muscles, you have mantle muscles instead. Um, some octopus do have rudimentary shells, which is just evolutionary, it's been reduced, and it's just a little bitty bit that's still left over from uh, moving away from being a shelled animal. Uh, the reproductive organs are back here. Um, the kidney is in a little bit of a different location um, than on the clam. Um, and one thing that you'll notice is that the octopus has a couple of different adaptations in addition to what the clam has. Um, so it does have an ink sac, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, the ink is used as a defense mechanism. Um, it does have a brain, um, but it's not the traditional brain that we think of where it's like a big mass. Um, again, we'll talk about that brain a little bit later, um, has a buccal mass and a beak. So this is the octopus's mouth. So the beak is the modified radula that they use to eat their, their little prey. Okay. Um, so octopus intelligence, this is something really interesting to talk about, um, because octopus are considered to be one of the most intelligent animals on the face of the earth. Uh, but it's a little bit weird because they don't have a traditional brain. Um, common octopus or the octopus vulgaris has around 500 million neurons in its body. Um, but in octopus, three fifths out of all of those neurons are actually dispersed and concentrated in the arms. So here in this diagram, you can see you have your brain right here between his eyes. And then these little yellow lines are all those neurons um, dispersed throughout the arms of this octopus. Um, so that means that that common octopus where he has around 5 million neurons, around 3 million of those are going to be concentrated in his arms. Um, this is really quite amazing because it means that if one of those arms is severed, um, it can actually still function independently of the body for a period of time, 
Um, and that severed arm will actually still be searching for food and will, if they find something, they'll still try and bring it back to the now non-existent mouth of the octopus. Um, they are incredibly intelligent and because those neurons are dispersed throughout each of those arms, they do have a mind of their own. Um, it allows them to be able to perform very complex tasks. So this octopus here on the left is solving a Rubik's cube. Um, there's been lots of different studies where scientists have given an octopus a complicated puzzle to solve. It's like a Rubik's cube, some of those other like metal puzzles, like the one with the ring and the horseshoes. Um, and they have to solve the puzzle in order to get a treat. Um, and they do it and it's quite amazing to see them be able to do that with them not having a true traditional brain. Um, and then they can also unscrew lids and open jars. This octopus was actually opening a jar from the inside out, um, which is incredible to me. So we're gonna go back for just a second to this guy. Um, so octopus actually have two hearts um, or no, they have three, excuse me. Um, so they have one systematic heart. Mm -hmm. So that heart is going to be the one that is responsible for um, circulating blood throughout the entire body of the animal. Um, and then you have two brachial hearts. Um, and those two are responsible for pumping blood through each of the two sets of gills. Um, so both of those are super, super important. And they're separated because the gills are really important for the animal to be able to breathe and to be able to function. Um, so there needs to be two hearts specifically allocated for those two sets of gills. And there needs to be one that is dedicated to just circulating blood throughout the body. All right, so locomotion. Um, Octopus move in a variety of different ways, but the two main are uh, via jet propulsion, which is over here in the left photo. And then they also walk like this cute little coconut octopus over here. Um, so what the octopus do is they shoot water out of their siphon um, and they use that as jet propulsion through the water. Um, so they can also angle that siphon in different directions and it can aim them in different directions as well. So it can help with um, changing directions and aiming them to where they wanna go. Um, so they force, so they bring in the water through that, um, through that siphon, have it in their mantle cavity, and then they forcefully expel it out through the siphon and it, again, is that jet propulsion. Uh, and they can also walk on their legs, uh, just muscles in their legs. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> All right. Octopus have arms. All right. They don't have tentacles. Um, they have arms. So, give me just a second. Um, they have over 250 tentacles on each of their arms and each of those tentacles or the suckers, um, I'm sorry, I did not mean tentacles. I meant suckers. <laughs> they have 250 suckers on each of their arms and those suckers can move independently, um, and can grasp things all by themselves. They also have sensor receptors in each of the individual suckers. So each sucker can smell and taste things and that helps them to better be able to find food to bring back to the main, the main body, bring it back to the mouth of the octopus. All right, so an arm versus a tentacle. Uh, octopus have arms, they don't have tentacles. Um, and it's mostly, it comes down to the sucker anatomy almost. Um, so the octopus has arms that are completely covered in suckers. Um, so from all the way up by the mouth, up underneath his body, all the way down to the tip of his tentacle, he has suckers. 
uh, or his arm, excuse me, <laughs> all the way down to the tip of his arm. He's covered in suckers on the underside. Um, however, if it's a tentacle, it's mostly concentrated down at the very end of the tentacle, um, the suckers are, and they tend to have little teeth. So you can kind of see in this image to the right, um, you know, there's a larger concentration of suckers over here, um, down at the bottom, and it has like little teeth. Um, so squid actually have eight arms and then two feeding tentacles. Um, so if you think of a squid, you have your, you know, your big main long body, then he has his eight arms like an octopus, and then there's two longer tentacles, almost arm, they look like um, very similar to the squid's arms, but they're actually tentacles. And they have like little paddles at the end of them that are covered in these suckers with the teeth. Um, and squid, those are actually retractable. Um, so they can extend those are those tentacles out, grab onto their food, and then retract it back up to their mouth um, so that the other arms can be used simply for swimming and assisting with swimming. All right, so we have a beak. Octopus have beak. This is the only hard part in this animal. Um, so this is how it is indeed classified as a mollusk um, because mollusks are soft-bodied animals that have shells. Um, this beak is the shell on your octopus um, and this is how it's classified as a mollusk. It looks like a bird, kind of like a bird's beak as you can tell in this left image. Um, and it's tucked up underneath the body on the octopus. If you look over here at the right image, um, it's right here up in the middle. So all eight of the arms kind of radiate out from that mouth and from the beak. Um, and the beak is right smack dab in the middle on the underside. So because the beak is the only hard part of this animal, um, the octopus can squeeze through pretty much any hole or crevice in which their beak can fit through. Um, <coughs> so this octopus is squeezing through, looks like a little clear tube um, as a maze between, uh, or as a bridge between one tank to another, it almost looks like. Um, so they can squeeze again, through any hole that their beak can fit through. Um, there's a video that has circulated through YouTube and Facebook and different social media platforms of an octopus that was actually brought up on to a fishing boat. And it is kind of moving along on the deck, trying to find the ocean. And there's just a little itty bitty hole like about this big. Um, and it's a giant Pacific octopus and it's able to squeeze its entire body through that little itty bitty hole. Um, so it's pretty, pretty remarkable um, what they can do. So feeding, as I said, octopus suckers have a uh, taste and smelling um, sensory receptors in each of the individual suckers. Um, so this is an octopus smelling and tasting <laughs> somebody's hand. Um, so they're always on the search, their arms are always on the search for food. Um, and this image on the right is an octopus eating like a little, a little shark. Um, so they do eat a variety of things. They are carnivorous. Um, so they eat lots of different fishes. Um, they also eat other mollusks as well. In fact, that's kind of one of the telltale signs in, when you're out diving, um, if you're looking for an octopus den. Um, so if you're swimming along and you see a hole or like a little overhang in the reef or in rocks or something like that, um, and you see kind of a scattering of shells um, from different mollusks, right in the entrance of that hole, more than likely an octopus is gonna be living there. You may not be home, um, but you will be home later. 
All right, so defense. Uh, octopus have two different types of defense mechanisms, two main ones. Uh, the first one is their ink um, that I'm sure we all are relatively familiar with. Um, so they do have an ink sac in their bodies. Um, so if they do feel threatened and that they need to quickly get away from something, um, they will expel a little black cloud like this, this guy over here. Um, or this guy on the right. And it's mainly used to distract and, uh, yeah, to distract the predator who's trying to eat them or who's threatening them. Um, and then they quickly swim away with their little water jet propulsion through their siphon. Um, the ink does have toxins in it that can cause temporary blindness in some animals. Um, so not only is it distracting, but it's also very disorienting and can cause you to lose your sight for a little bit. Um, so, and because this ink is kind of toxic, it becomes an issue, not out in the wild, uh, because they ink and then they swim right away. Um, but actually in a tank, if you have an octopus in captivity in your home aquarium or even in an aquarium at like Maui Ocean Center or Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, if they ink inside of that tank, um, then that ink lingers and can actually be harmful to that animal. So that's actually the main reason, or one of the main reasons that they ask you to not use flash photography when you're taking pictures of the octopus in an aquarium tank um, so that you don't stun it and so it's not stuck in there with its ink. All right, then the other defense mechanism is camouflage. So uh, this is a little bit of a where's Waldo, <laughs> uh, but where's the Octo? Um, so here in this upper left image, here's our octopus over here camouflaging into the rocks and the algae and the sand over here in its environment. Then over here on the right, you have another one right over here, right in the middle of the frame. Uh, they are incredible, incredible masters of disguise. Um, if any of you have been diving with them, um, you have probably seen their color change in person. I know I have, and it's absolutely remarkable. Um, they are covered in little pigment cells called chromatophores. Um, so this whole page is all chromatophores. So the top image is a color image of the chromatophores. Um, and they're just little itty bitty pigment cells scattered throughout the skin of the octopus. Um, so what they do is when they wanna change their color, um, they either contract or expand that individual chromatophore cell um, to release more pigment or to pull pigment out of, or to squeeze pigment out of that cell. Um, so here on the bottom, you have two different stages of that chromatic, chromatophore expansion and contraction. So box A is the chromatophore that is contracted. So the pigment is more condensed. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily see it more on the skin. So they're taking the pigment away. Um, so like little little dark spots over here in this A box, but the B box, sorry, this is going all over the place. <laughs> but in the B box, um, the chromatophores are expanded. So the pigment is more spread out. So um, it is more visible and more obvious. Okay, so that's how these octopus change colors and they can do it extremely rapidly. Um, this allows them to be able to blend in with their surroundings um, and they can also change their skin texture as well. Um, there are some animals that do or some octopus that do mimic other animals as well as a way um, to hide from other predators. So this guy is the Indonesian octopus and he's kind of cute. Little black and white guy. This is his head. Here are his two little eyes. Um, and he actually mimics a variety of fish um, that are generally in his environment. Um, so here on the top, 
This is the octopus and he's mimicking a flatfish or a flounder or something like that. Um, really quite incredible that he, you know, um, forms his body to look like this flatfish. Um, and then right here, he's mimicking a lionfish. And then the bottom one, he's mimicking a sea snake. Um, <clears throat> so not only uh, do octopus use, you know, color changing and the changing of their skin texture, um, but they also will contort their bodies in a way to where they can look like something else. All right, now we're going to talk about reproduction, octopus sex. <laughs> All right. Um, so there are two separate sexes in octopus. So there is the male and there is the female. Um, it's kind of difficult to tell from the external anatomy on an octopus. Um, however, a male does have one of his arms that acts kind of like a penis. Um, so that arm is called a hectocotylus. Um, and it's where he transfers the sperm in, or the spermatophore, which is an elongated sperm packet um, from his body into the female. Um, so they do kind of a little bit of a mating dance. They kind of wrestle around. And if the female decides that, yeah, all right, I'll have your babies, um, she'll let him insert his hectocotylus into her mantle cavity through her siphon and deliver the spermatophore to her, um, to her reproductive organs. Um, and then she will be pregnant. Oftentimes, um, this mating process, she can be a little bit aggressive and the female um, can end up killing the male and she will eat him for nourishment for her little babies that she's about to have. All right, um, so then the octopus, the female octopus, she has her fertilized eggs and she will lay them. Um, she will stick them to the ceiling of her den. Um, so this upper image on the left, she has stuck all of these eggs, um, these egg strands up on her, up on the roof of her den. And as you can see, they're little itty bitty, like grains of rice almost. <laughs> um, almost kind of look like couscous. Um, and she's sitting there, she's nursing her eggs. And this mother octopus, uh, this is gonna be her last and final act in her entire life. Uh, once she lays her eggs, she will not leave her den. And she will sit and she will um, nurture those eggs and she will blow fresh salt water all over those eggs to maintain circulation. Um, she'll use her siphon to do that. Um, she'll protect the eggs with her life, pretty much. Um, this image down here on the right is an up-close image of octopus eggs. This is from a Hawaiian day octopus. Down here on the bottom right, I actually took this picture um, from when I had an internship at the Maui Ocean Center, um, the Hawaiian Aquarium on Maui in Ma'alaya Harbor. Um, we had an octopus there who we didn't realize might be fertilized, um, and she laid eggs in the tank. And so in an effort to try and propagate the eggs, if they were uh, fertilized, we pulled them out of the tank and put them into a separate, um, separate tank for them so that we could keep an eye on them. Unfortunately, they did not hatch, so they were not fertilized, but it was still a really, really cool thing to see. Um, so this one is a little bit more obvious. Um, you can see, you know, little individual grains of rice, um, almost, and those are the individual eggs on that strand. All right, so then when the time is right, all of these little eggs with all the little baby octopus, um, they're getting ready and when the time is right, those little baby octopus will hatch. Um, and they're not in larval stage. So octopus do not go through a larval stage. They just go straight from egg to juvenile, uh, meaning that they are fully functioning. They're already in their same body form, um, ready to go when they come out of the egg. 
Um, what's really interesting too is, as you can see in this left image over here, they already have all of those chromatophores developed while they're in the egg. Um, so you'll often see them practicing um, moving and uh, expanding and contracting those chromatophores inside of the egg um, before they've even hatched. But then they really go ham <laughs> when they have hatched. So this is your little juvenile octopus um, once he's already hatched. Um, there will be thousands of babies um, that come from one clutch, um, from one egg laying, um, and that number all varies depending on the species of octopus. So that is all of the prepared material that I have for you guys. Um, are there any questions that you have um, you want to ask about an octopus or you know about the ocean in general? Um, I'm totally open to questions right now. Um, you can type them in the chat box if you would like. No questions? How long does it take for them to regenerate ink? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, I believe it is just a matter of a couple of days. Um, let me look back in my notes really quickly um, and I can get that answer for you. Um, and then Jamie's asking the survival rates <laughs> I knew what you meant, Jamie. Uh, their survival rate of octopus juveniles. Um, with most other fish, um, you know, their survival rate really isn't um, super great. Um, what I found in my notes. Um, and in my research for this presentation is they only have a 1% survival rate, um, which is higher <laughs> than a lot of other fish. So we're gonna go ahead and compare that to the seahorse real quick. Um, so seahorse, they'll give birth to um, up to, you know, 600 babies at one time. Um, and seahorses only have a 0.01%, so one out of a thousand. Um, so an octopus is a little bit better, <laughs> quite a bit better than, um, than a seahorse. Um, you have to keep in mind that they are small animals, um, and when they are first hatched or when they're first born, they become a part of the planktonic community. And there are a lot a lot, a lot of other bigger animals, bigger fish that really, really like to eat, um, that really like to eat um, a lot of plankton. So, you know, mantas for one, they eat plankton, uh, whale sharks, a hole, hole, lots, just lots of other animals. So um, it makes it easy for little baby octopus to get eaten up by other bigger guys. Um, I mentioned eating mollusks. Great Pacific octopus eat a lot of crab. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Chris. Um, so octopus, they don't just eat mollusks, they eat lots of fish, different invertebrates, crustaceans. Um, they're kind of fierce little predators in the, in the ocean. Kate is asking, um, can an octopus regenerate an arm if lost? Yeah, they actually can. Um, it takes quite some time, uh, so they don't want to lose their arm unless absolutely necessary. Um, but yeah, they can regenerate their arms. Uh, yeah, so kind of cool. Um, and then Michael is asking, does the mother octopus die after the eggs hatch? What are the main octopus species in Hawaii? Um, so, yeah, so the mother octopus does die after the eggs hatch. Um, so nurturing those eggs is her last and final act in her life. Um, they don't typically have a really long lifespan. It's only about, they become mature after a year, and then after that, they mate and they die. 
um, pretty much. So they don't live for very long. Um, so, um, yeah, they they take care of their eggs and then they die and they become a part of the a part of the food chain. Um, and I, the main species of octopus that you're going to see in Hawaii is going to be the Hawaiian day octopus or the he. All right. Now I'm still looking at my notes for ink regeneration really quickly. All of these are super awesome questions. Um, so it does just, it's just a short period of time. Um, about a day or so for that octopus to be able to completely regenerate all of its ink that it did expel. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did forget to mention, um, so for octopus mating reproduction, um, the male can actually tear off his hectocotylus and offer it to the female. So he can um, transport that spermatophore from up in his gonads all the way down into that hectocotylus and then rip it off and give it to the female for use at a later time if she's not quite ready to be pregnant right then and there. All right. Do males live longer? No, they tend to live shorter, um, mostly because the mating process, the mating dance in octopus tends to be a little bit aggressive. Um, and the female does tend to kill the male um, and eat him. So <laughs> it's kind of like a black widow or like a, um, what is that word? A praying mantis to where the female survives the male. All right, are there any other questions? All of those have been really, really good questions. <laughs> Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you enjoyed it, Jamie. Um, if you guys have not seen already, we do have another octopus video that just came out this week, I believe a day or two ago, um, where it's Sandy Hamill, one of our other instructors. Um, she's giving some more information on octopus, um, doing a voiceover for some videos that were shot underwater. So if you want to check that out, you it's a really great example of octopus locomotion and you can see them moving around and in action stay tuned there will be another episode here coming up soon um probably in the next week or two um and again keep an eye out on the kona honu um, facebook page and when that webinar is ready to go we'll have a sign up again up on there all right thank you all so so much guys